Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol here. <laughs> kittens? Where's kittens? Is that what you said? <laughs> I'm here with Arthur. Arthur Tiger. The very handsome Arthur Tiger. Came out here looking to see if they are handing out evening meds. Yeah, because you guys are probably on the list. Hello, everybody. And I can see your comments. I'm so happy. So happy. I see... Feels like romper room. I see Emma and Jade and Amy and Megan and Sherry and Vivica and Kitty and Becky and Karen. Lovely to see all of you fine people tonight. I lost the little thumb screw on my stabilizer. I just bought the thing in October, October 15th. And already the screw has fallen out of it that allows me to hold the camera stable. <laughs> That's like an important part of the stabilizer. So I wrote the company today and it's like everything's in Chinese. But I asked them if there's any way I could buy another one of those screws. If not, I can probably take it to the hardware store and find something to fit in there. Hey, Lori and Deborah. And Andre. Sweet Andre. <gasps> yes, you are. This is Sweet Andre Tiger. Hey, Jerry and Jessica and Gletta and Judy. Cameron's pacing around like he's waiting on his dinner. I may not have missed it all. Walk away? All right. I spent almost the entire day in a sauna. It's like my new favorite thing. <laughs> How many of you guys use a sauna where you work? Let me see your hands. Especially if you're somebody who has some experience with assigning tasks and all of that kind of stuff because I went through some really painful processes today in order to make things repeat. Like there are projects that repeat every year, like our Wildcat Walkabout, but then, Sarah, thank you for donating. But then there are also sub tasks within that project that will also be repeating every year. So I don't know if the thing, if you make the project repeat, whether it would repeat all of those tasks Jenna, thank you for donating. Or if it's going to make me, well, I already did, um, go in and assign each one of those as a yearly event to each of the people that they were assigned to. But as I was doing it, I thought, man, there's just got to be a better way. There's got to be some way that you can set in preferences or like mass edit <laughs> something so that it will always repeat weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever it is that you want to do on it. I just recently learned that ibis are protected. I also heard something weird. I, I've contacted the Florida Wildlife Commission, but at our staff meeting today, Gail said someone, I think it was her sister, was at the Mount Dora Hospital, which is in Central Florida. It's a really beautiful part of Florida. It's very hilly, which you don't see in Florida, but Mount Dora is known for its hills. Anyway, um, at the hospital, she said that there was the police, animal control, and a Florida Wildlife Commission officer all gathered around a big black cat, and that the FWC officer kept referring to it as Black Panther, which you would think somebody working for the FWC wouldn't know there's no such thing as a Black Panther. They're all so pretty when birds fly their uh, black leopards or black jaguars. So, uh, Patty, he's pacing because he gets evening snacks. All of our cats are fed in the morning, but he's such a skinny cat and such a poor doer that he has to be offered food at least twice a day. And so he's very anxiously awaiting that second meal. Kali! Kali Tiger! But you'll get no argument out of me that these cats do not belong in cages. I absolutely agree with that statement. And you can help us put an end to that evilness over at BigCatAct.com. 
Oh, he jumped right out of my frame. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Who's the happy cat? Meds might be going a little bit later than usual tonight because apparently Honey was supposed to help with it, but I had a package that had to go in the mail tonight. So she said she wasn't going to be able to help with meds if she had to go to the post office because tomorrow's Thanksgiving and nobody works on Thanksgiving apparently. Hey Artemis! Hey Christine and Deb and Deb. <laughs> Uh, Deb Anasazi died a few days ago. If you go to bigcatrescue.org forward slash Anasazi, and I'll help you with the spelling. It's A-N-A-S-A-Z-I, just like the ancient Indians. Artemis is like, if I don't make eye contact, maybe she'll just go away. <laughs> is that what you're hoping? You're hoping it just go away? All right, I will do that. I will just go away. Cindy, thank you for posting that link. There have been so many of you wonderful people out there who have been donating your services to help us, and I have a need. <laughs> Seeing Cindy reminds me. Seeing Cindy reminds me because she donates her artwork and she's done some beautiful seem to be having seem to be having trouble with my internet service for some reason Cindy donates her artwork and so that's enabled us to put a lot of really wonderful t-shirt designs up on Amazon. If you go to Amazon and search Big Cat Rescue Tees, you'll find a ton. You'll find a ton. All right. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. You'll find a ton of t-shirts <laughs> that she has donated the designs on. But now what I need is really good ad copy. So if any of you are particularly wonderful wordsmiths with a bent toward marketing it would be really really helpful if you could help me come up with some great descriptions now for the t-shirts that are on amazon i can't do a whole lot with the descriptions there because amazon doesn't give you a field to do Is going to feed Will. Oh, and he's up on the cool roof. That's where Anna Sazi was when we went in to catch her for the last time. Up in the cool This is where you ate this morning. Yeah, sorry about that, Missy. Am I keeping him from coming? Uh, no, I don't think so. Once he's on that cool roof. Then it's only breakfast in bed, eh? <laughs> So I'll put it in here because this is where he ate his breakfast this morning. Oh, you're going to love it, mister. As long as we're back here, let's see if we can find Nabisco and Mrs. Claus. Yeah, I didn't even know the stabilizer could go upside down, but it did. <laughs> oh, what's your kittens doing? Oh, very so precious. Are you playing? Where'd she go? There she is. Here's the missus. Oh, don't grab my phone. You guys are so busy. You're so busy. You're everywhere. Those are the biscuits. Right. Looks like Will's going over there to eat. <laughs> I love that bird. The chirpy bird. So what I was trying to say when I lost my signal, 
is that I need some ad copy written for the stuff that we sell on Amazon. Not the t-shirts, because they don't have, let's see if I can get you back to the other part of their cage, they don't have um, the ability for us to use great descriptions, but everything else that we sell on Amazon, if you search Big Cat Rescue, if you think, oh, I could write something up about this, then that would be really, really nice. Because the descriptions, especially if it has keywords, you know, that talk about the item in different words that people might be using to search for that item, then more people will find them and more people will buy them and that means more food for the cats. All good stuff. And we're all pouncy tonight. <laughs> you are adorable. Uh, David Quill is doing pretty good. Today we talked about him at the staff meeting and what we're trying to decide. He's getting fluids twice a week and B12 injections once a week. And there are some days of the week that he eats crazy. I mean, just really, really great. And so we're trying to figure out if it's the day he gets fluids, the day he gets B12, or both. So we're going to be looking at that. She's not in there. She's behind it. She went behind the den. Go get her. Go get her, you cute one. We can find smalls while we're back here. So, if you are a copywriter, marketer type that wants to donate your time to do that, just email those descriptions to me at cat, C-A-T, at bigcatrescue.org. Also, if you actually purchased a bracelet from us in the last few weeks from Amazon, doesn't count if you bought it from bigcatrescue.biz, doesn't count if you bought it on catrescue.biz, only counts if you bought it on Amazon. If you could go in and give me a review on that, that would be really nice because the reviews that Amazon really pays attention to are the ones from people that it can verify that you actually purchased it because when you log in they'll know whether or not you bought something and those are the most important reviews to helping us reach more people so I recently gave out a bunch of discount coupons I think 75 of one and 100 of another something like that for 50% off so I took a huge loss on that hoping that you wonderful people if you were the ones that got the benefit of that that you would take the time to go back into your Amazon account after you get the bracelet and leave me a review. That would be really, really helpful. Where are all the cats? There's Pharaoh! Way over there. I can't get there from here. Apparently, we still have some aftermath of Irma back here. This palm tree looks like it just fell over. Big part of why Florida got hit so hard, Florida trees anyway, is because we had a drought for two years and a lot of the trees were dying back and then we had all that wind and rain and it was just more than what the trees could stand after being so starved of water for so long. Beecher, Beecher's doing well. Beecher is still, <laughs> <laughs> still wanting to eat that crappy cat food instead of the good food that we want him to eat. So what we're going to try with him, because he is, I mean, he <laughs> they took ground beef and they mixed it up with his cat food and he managed to pull out every little stringy strand of the actual real meat and only ate whatever the heck is in friskies and his meow mix, whatever his dry food is. So he's eating fine. He's getting along with everybody fine, but he's not eating a good diet yet. So what I told him to do is like one day, and actually Jamie came up with the idea of using a magic bullet. <laughs> you never want to use one of our magic bullets here. But she said, put the cat food and the meat in a magic bullet and blend it up. And I said, make sure that when you do that, on the first day you just put in like a one inch cube of meat and then maybe the next day you can put in 
another one inch cube and so you keep increasing the amount of meat compared to the amount of cat food and by doing it gradually like that he should he should not notice it but we'll see I see Lisa responding to somebody about why they can't go free and I don't know if anybody posted it but we have a whole page about how that's not legal and not a good idea to send cats out to the wild who weren't raised by their moms and none of the cats in captivity were raised by their well none of the cats that end up in sanctuaries were raised by their moms because the reason they end up here is because people will stupidly pay to have their pictures made with a cub and the only way you do that is by taking the baby away from the mom very, very early, which is a torment to both the mother and the cub. Hey, Ginger. Somebody else on her Kuluru. The page that has all of the information about that is at bigcatrescue.org slash go free. Storm Anasazi didn't uh, eat breakfast a couple days ago and so we called the vet that same day because that's not like her and he came out after work Dr. Justin came out after work and her chin was a little bit swollen so we thought well maybe it was just a bad tooth that's what we were really hoping but once he had her sedated he could see that the whole lower mandible the lower jaw on one side was really really swollen and they did x-rays and tried to do a biopsy and finally decided he'd just have to open up that jaw to see what that was and it was a huge tumor we've sent it out to see if it's cancer but what else would it be um, and he tried for over an hour to cut that thing loose but it was so wrapped around her esophagus and her juggler vein that and it was under the muscle so he finally, after about an hour, said there's just no way he's going to be able to get it out. And even if he did, when you have a fast-growing mass like that, they usually come back pretty fast. And we, the first clue that we had was when we went to sedate her. You know how they put the tube down the cat's throat to keep him on gas? And when he went to do that, the tube would hardly fit because her throat was starting to close up from this mass. And so it just wasn't fair to put her through and surgery and everything else when she was 15 years old which is like being a 90 year old person and there was nothing we were going to be able to do to cure it. it there's just no way that it wouldn't keep coming back and so we didn't want to put her through all of that and decided to euthanize her frosty paws If I hadn't been chatting, I probably could have caught up to them when they were feeding Beecher. That's where they are right now. It looks like they're done. Thank you, Nancy. Anasazi was very special to a lot of us. She just had such a great personality and was always looking for an opportunity to pee on you and you could just see her grinning from ear to ear whenever she gets you. She got me a time or two. Danielle, it is hard because right now 20 of our cats are over the age of 20. So, you know, that's like being 120 years old. So we know that those guys are not going to be with us much longer. And then when you have a 15 year old die, then that's really heartbreaking because we expected we were gonna have another five years. And thank you very much for donating. For those who are new to us, this is Beecher. Beecher is a Savannah cat, which is a hybrid between a serval and a domestic cat. And poor Luana. You know, we, we really think it's wrong for people to breed and buy and trade in Savannah cats because it doesn't matter if you have a nice Savannah cat yourself. There's so many like Beecher who end up being unwanted because they're so wild. 
and the only ones that make halfway decent pets are usually F4, which means there's four generations. Rachel, thank you for donating. There's four generations between the wild cat and the domestic cat, so of course by that time they're starting to be a little bit more domestic acting. But you can't get to F4 without creating a bunch of F1, F2, and F3 that end up being abandoned or relegated to breeding mills or um, sometimes taken to shelters and the shelters will usually just euthanize them because nobody wants to adopt a cat that pees all over everything, which is usually the reason. But what's sad is that there's so many people who have hybrids who want They want to be seen as not having done something wrong. And so I think that's why they are so vicious. And Luana was saying it's easier to deal with all of the big cat trolls who hate us because we don't think the big cats should be bred for life in cages either. Those guys, you know, they're, they're cruel and they say nasty things and they spread lies, but the hybrid people are like a hundred times worse. And I can't figure out why. Laurie, thank you very much for donating. Except for the fact that more of them have kind of, a, to use a horrible cliche, a dog in that fight. I think they feel, Storm, thank you for donating. I think they feel like they have to justify having done that. And as a result, <laughs> they're just awful to deal with. Thankfully, Beecher's owner was a rare example of somebody who did a lot of research before she bought Beecher. She paid $15,000 for the cat and then ended up building a $10,000 room on her house to try and make it work. And for over five years, she did everything she could to try and make a pet out of a cat who had no intention of being a pet because it's a wild animal when they're crossed to the wild. Hey, Armani. And so instead of being defensive and hiding what she did and dumping the cat in the wild or dumping it at a animal control, she called us and she did a, a great video for people who might be thinking about getting a hybrid cat. And it's on his page. So if you go to bigcatrescue.org slash Beecher, B-E-A-C-H-E-R, you'll see the video of the woman the day that she brought him in talking about how she tried everything in the world to make it work and just couldn't. Beautiful Armani. Yeah, Cindy's right. Um, she actually, the owner had come here before she got the cat and of course we told her it was going to be a really bad idea to do that. Leslie, thank you for the donation. But like most people, she thought she was different. <coughs> she thought she could spend all the money in the world on him and all the time. She didn't have to work. She could stay home with the cat and bond with him all the time. And it just, it doesn't work. They're wild animals. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who will share images of themselves with wild animals or hybrids, but those are all youngsters, you know, they're under five years old. They still haven't sexually matured and it doesn't matter if you neuter or spay them, they still grow up to be wild animals. I don't see Liza. I don't see Cyrus. I thought I did, but it was a ball. I know Beth, Lonnie's all by herself now. That's sad. Diablo. Diablo's another hybrid cat. We don't take a lot of hybrids because usually they're pretty small, like Diablo, and they have to live in a two by four style wire because they'll fit right through those bigger holes in the four by four. But Beecher's pretty big, so we're gonna test him out. He needs to get his vaccines anyway. So what we're gonna do after Thanksgiving is we'll take him in the cat hospital and while he's in the cat hospital we'll put him in a 4x4 cage and try to see if we can tempt him through the wire 
put some cameras on him so that we can watch him when he thinks nobody's looking <laughs> to see if he'll try to get out of the 4x4. And while he's in there, we'll do his vaccines and everything. And then we'll put him back out. But when we put him back out, he may be able to go into a much larger enclosure because we don't have very large 2x4 type cages. Helena, I did not name him Diablo. And that was done by our previous operations manager. Linda Beecher is adjusting just fine. If you saw him just now, he was just laying there next to the carrier. He's got a den, and usually he's in the den with hay, but uh, just now he was out strolling around when they took him his easy meal. The lion you hear roaring right now is Nikita. It's a female. Thank you, Shandi. I got a really nice letter from one of the people who watches us on Facebook. And they were talking about having been the recipient of spousal abuse for many, many years. And finally having the courage after dang near being killed to get out of that relationship. And then within a few months was diagnosed with cancer. And I just, my heart goes out to all of these people and I, I hear from so many of you that are struggling with so many difficult situations but the reason that she was writing was to say that because of all of the uh, painful things in her life that she was always depressed and it wasn't until she started watching these Facebook Live videos and then meeting so many of you who are fellow watchers and interacting with you on our Big Cat Rescue Facebook group, which is a closed group. We keep it closed to make sure that we don't let any really hateful people in there to stir up tra trouble. So you have to get approved to get in, but and we monitor it really closely because we want it to be a place where people are safe, where they're not going to be attacked. And if they have questions, their questions will be answered respectfully. And being part of that group has given her a new lease on life. I talked about it today at our staff meeting too, because I feel like our staff and of course all of our amazing volunteers they're helping people as much as they're helping these cats by being um, by being open to allowing me to get this camera in their face <laughs> and ask them questions and kind of be that voice back and forth between what I can see you guys asking on the screen and the person that is working with the cat. And so all of them have been really wonderful about allowing me to do that. And a lot of them actually respond to you guys in the different groups or on Facebook. And so it's building like this huge family of people. And I just wanted everybody to know how much they were appreciated. So I was telling them about it this morning. And Afton said, she answers a lot of the questions on YouTube, especially. 
and says that she hears that sort of thing all the time, that people will tell her that they are dealing with medical issues or they're in crisis because their pet might be dying or they're dealing with some hardship and they've just been so thankful for all of you guys who are being so kind to them inside of our Facebook group and on our Facebook page. So I just wanted to say, you guys rock. <laughs> you just absolutely rock. I really, really appreciate that. It's white bird time. <laughs> Apparently all these birds now are making their way down here. And I don't rem remember the last time we did this, probably last fall, but there's a land bridge on your left hand side there and all of these white ibis fly into the land bridge and then one or two at a time they'll fly out to that tree which is completely in the water and they love that tree because nothing can get to them. They are completely safe out there and they know it. <laughs> so it's like this nightly ritual of all these birds flying in the land bridge and then a couple of times heading over to the tree. Everybody's got to pick a favorite branch. All right, there goes another one and another one. Oh, and another one. Yeah, we really love the ibis. They make <laughs> such a cool sound. Well, you guys can hear them over there, but it's a really cool sound. Sarah, I am. <laughs> um, you can see up by the cell tower there, there goes that airplane that you're hearing. The cell tower doesn't actually have anything on it except an ATM machine. I don't know how that works, but that's what they tell me is up there. But it provides like a thousand dollars a month to the cats, so I'm happy. Yeah, Cindy, Duchess loves them too much. <laughs> I've seen now two piles of white feathers in there. All right, we're back to where we started. Back where we started with Arthur. Or Andre, who is this? Who are you? Who are you? Arthur. You guys have changed spots. I'd say we never change our stripes. Nope. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh. Love spending time with you. Yes. What a good boy. Such a good boy. too adorable. I'm trying to sign off here. Do you have to be so freaking adorable? Yes, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Gonna be lots of turkeys handed out tomorrow.